I came to the hospital for sick children to, to complete my PhD studies. And the reason I came here was uh, at the time it was really the place studying human genetic diseases. And there were new technologies being developed at that time, which we now kind of laugh at because they're so antiquated. But at the time, they were the, the lead site in the world for identifying disease genes. In the early 2000s, we were working on several different projects where, where we were looking very closely at the DNA sequence of different individuals in the population and comparing them. And we started to get a hint that, in fact, there seemed to be large changes of copy numbers of the DNA or the genes that we were looking at. And we could find, in fact, that uh, each of us carry hundreds of these copy number variants. It's something we, we didn't think could occur at such a high frequency. Uh, and that's why we didn't discover for a long time. People just didn't know how to look for it. We knew of the importance of discovery because, in fact, you know, I, this is really what I trained my entire career for. All of the different aspects of the work came out of parts of my training in the past. So I knew of the importance of this, but I had no idea how quickly it would be taken up by the community. In the long term, we, we foresee a time when individuals' DNA will be scanned to generate the gene copy number variation that would um, be used in, in administering particular dosage and, and specific drugs, for example. Uh, and in fact, most pharmaceutical companies are now using this information in populations to test new drugs. We have uh, over 75 staff here working in different facilities from DNA sequencing to uh, synthesis to genotyping microarrays and statistical analysis and bioinformatics and everything that essentially a genomics laboratory would do. The Center for Applied Genomics uh, is actually the first human genome center in Canada. The idea was to build infrastructure to facilitate biomedical research and in particular disease gene uh, studies. We're very proud of the uh, operations of the center because um, it actually supports well over 500 different uh, laboratories in, in Ontario in any given year. Uh, and this is not including all the students, it's actually independent labs. Uh, so it's a very, very busy place. We have about 80% of our users are from Ontario, about 15% from Canada, another 5% from international. And I think the thing we're most proud of actually is the fact that um, we've been able to keep a lot of scientific projects in Canada by having this infrastructure here. Uh, Pre-1998, if someone has some interesting disease samples, they may take them to the United States. And now they can actually come and do all of their experiments here, uh, even if they don't have their own laboratory, for example. It's really become probably one of the top five resources for genomics research in the world, all in two years. So uh, we're very, very happy to have this here. And it's, it's really catalyzing our research, not only within our own laboratory, but within the Toronto community. So we're focusing now to generate um, a baseline map, essentially, or a collection or catalog of all of this copy number variation data, which we house here in Toronto called the Database for Genomic Variants. The database has become the center, certainly, for all copy number variation data. This is the place that everyone comes. We're analyzing thousands of DNA samples using the latest microarray technologies to try to capture the normal variation content we see in different worldwide populations. Put that in the database and then when anyone, it could be a clinical genetics laboratory, a biotech company, an academic lab who's studying disease, finds their copy number variation content in their sample they're studying, they compare to the database to see if they find changes that may be specific to the disease. And using this approach, uh, it leads to the identification of new disease genes. The database now is being utilized several thousand times per day by different labs around the world from uh, pharmaceutical industry to biotech to clinical diagnostics. Uh, we just received 10,000 data points from Korea, for example, where we're doing the analysis. And it's really all because of the, ha having the database here. When I go abroad and travel, people know Toronto on the map, and it's, it's certainly in North America one of the top three or four sites. Uh, it's very easy for me to recruit some of the best trainees from around the world. In the field of genomics, uh, you have to be able to move fast. Uh, genomics, by definition, is, is big and fast. Uh, so to be able to do that, you have to collaborate. Uh, and often, it's, it's much quicker to do an experiment through collaboration than to learn or import the technology. 
So that, that's one of the reasons it's so advantageous to be in the Mars Centre here and within this University of Toronto teaching hospital community. Uh, if I can't do something in my own lab, I can go across the street and I have everything within a one block radius. The integration of basic scientists uh, working very closely and, and really fully integrated with the clinical scientists uh, is critically important. Um, and I'll just give you one example. In our autism project, we're studying the, the genetics of autism. And we've developed here a, a team of developmental pediatricians, molecular biologists, computer scientists, all working uh, on studying the, the genetics of autism. And we could not have developed this group anywhere else in Canada or the world. We really, it's this multidisciplinary team that's allowed us to actually make much progress over the last few years. Toronto, for me, uh, has everything that I, I, I would need to be successful um, in my career and also in my family life, and it's really a wonderful place. I'm not from Toronto originally, I'm from Windsor, Ontario, so for me, Toronto was always the big city you would go to on vacation, but in fact, Toronto is a livable city. Uh, I spent my last 20 years here. There's parks everywhere in Toronto. I have two young kids, and they like to go to the parks and play. Toronto really has everything. It's a cosmopolitan city, but it's, it's livable. Uh, and now that there's been significant investments in the R&D world, in particular downtown here, um, this is really a great place. I see a, a strong, strong future for biomedical research here. And I think now really the obligation is on the scientists to use this as an engine to drive the economy forward. The way that we define the success of our research is, is to start a project and finish a project and along the way make discoveries that have some type of an impact, either socially or medically. Um, and we've been able to design many of our projects so that we can do this because of this unique relationship we have with, with the hospital and, and the downtown Toronto community whereby essentially we start with a, a DNA sample from uh, an individual that has a particular disorder, for example. And we've planned many experiments to find the disease-causing genes, and then we generate information we can relay back or transfer back to the families. And if we can do this in, in a relatively short time period, we can actually impact the family that's contributed to our, our study at the onset. So when this happens, it's incredible. You see uh, the families are very excited, and, and they participate in the research, and they see the impact it's having on their lives and, and the lives of other children who have the same disease.